Something extraordinary happens when Zeffirelli comes to the Met. In many ways, it reminds me of Romeo and Juliet. It's, it's the Romeo and Juliet of Puccini. It's a story of young people, a story of a tragic love. A tragic love with uh, alternating with uh, great moments of hope and passion and beauty. I've never seen a bad uh, boy. It might sound uh, incredible, but nevertheless, there is something in this work that you cannot destroy. As I often do when I'm offered a new production of some works that I really care for, I like to design my own sets. It stands out of my uncertainties, in a way, in my early years, where I didn't know if I wanted to be a director or a designer. It's always the big dilemma. Do you do what the author wanted, or do you try another experiment, which is what I always tried, to come up today with uh, that piece whom we composed about 100 years ago, and how would he conceive it today? How would uh, Puccini, how would he like to see his piece staged today? That's uh, what I'm, I've always been trying to do, to be fair to the original creator. So my sets for Bohem are at the same time a dream of a past civilization, a past culture, but perfectly understandable to the audience of today. For instance, the idea of this small garret where four hungry kids live in the Paris of the early uh, 19th century was never fully achieved on a large um, opera stage. It became like a warehouse, it became a cathedral. And so all the gestures, all the things that happened in that garret had to be larger than life. But the story basically has to be acted very simply in a small space. You know, the Met is, uh, is this miraculous great uh, theater where you have, first of all, four or five stages that can come in and go out, sink, come up, and the human uh, element in this uh, stage is quite remarkable. Apart from the technical skill they have and experience, it's an extraordinary atmosphere to work here. Because there is really the feeling of being in the best place at the right moment. This is Franco's second La Boheme. His first for La Scala is still running after nearly 20 years. But I think this production for the Metropolitan is even more brilliant and a much more mature work. You know, Franco claims he doesn't read music, but from working with him, it's perfectly apparent that he knows every note and every word by heart the same way he knows every board and nail in his own set. Now, what happened? A frame broke here? Check that number two, see if it's fouling. I wonder if anybody could do anything with this. It would be wonderful. Oh, Napoleon. <laughs> There is no way we can use him. What the hell? What the hell is this? Boys, as you are here, what happened? What we have to do is to keep in mind the only essential uh, guiding element in, uh, that we have at our disposal, which is the music, the musical texture, and try to illustrate it, to visualize it with all the possibilities that that modern technique, stage technique offers. Oh, he had, oh, I see, a real door. Not a stage door. No, but we'll think about it. Think about it, there is a good moment for it. So, from the beginning, please. Quiet. Yes, Peter. Okay. My main attention has been to reduce the acting area, to make 
this garret really a little nest where these poor starving kids are living. And that has, a, has had a tremendous effect on the whole handling of the acting. Now these people really live in a believable way their own little story. It's a little story, small and beautiful, but small. This is... Obviously, directing singers in opera is different from directing actors in plays, although the objective is the same. People are people. Singers are people. They're not uh, special animals that have this uh, fantasy of expressing themselves in singing rather than speaking. I think they make you believe in everything they do and everything they say through the music. Franco feels with them every detail, every step of the way. I want this character to be this and be that. So I have to show more than tell, put in words what I have in mind. Then we elaborate. Once you establish that she's going to, she's supposed to love him, then we show how she loves him. And elaborate and elaborate and elaboration never finishes. You must gain position at the center. Yeah. I'd, I'd like you, if, if you could try it one moment. Rodolfo, Rodolfo, you have that. Oh, me, oh, me, oh, Rodolfo. She's in coma. She's absolutely in coma. And then, and, and, Almost falling. Or this way. Whatever. They like to have a final image, a costume, what am I going to look like? No, what is the that. feeling I want to give to the audience with this character? Very pragmatic, very simple, very essential. But we keep in mind what the ultimate value or truth we have to establish. <laughs> Yeah. If it does good for me, it's perfect. you help her. Let me look around. It's a very logical moment. You really must help her because she cannot, she has no leeway. You sort it out, the two of you. You sort it out. You tell him when you want precisely because it, it, it'd be better both for her and also for the action. Because you support her. Then she can play. Broken neck and all of that, but she, she supported yeah, 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 yeah. In The actor, the performer, has to believe in what he's doing and make the audience believe. <laughs> don't, 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 don't overdo the sweetness of it. Voilà. Le Jules, c'est un Jules français. Un Jules français. Et bon, ami, mon Dieu. Rafa. Rafa. He's rough with the girls. <laughs> the cast that uh, a conductor, fine, wonderful conductor like uh, Levine has put together for me for this particular poem is, is uh, unparalleled. I've never seen anything before. I never worked with a group so extraordinarily right uh, in every role. Franco loves working with great colleagues, great singers and actors. They give him energy and he reflects it right back at them. He's great fun and at the same time he's deadly serious and they know it. Half of being a great director is having the performers believe in you so that they'll give you their best. <laughs> Singers love working with Franco because he understands their problems and because he treats their work with such respect. People don't seem to realize the physical effort that a singer has to produce during a performance. Everything seems so natural and so easy. 
And people don't question, how does he produce those sounds? How does he come to that pianissimo or that top note? Everything a singer is, in the end, he concentrates on the way he or she can use this little bit of flesh. This inch, less than an inch of flesh in the throat. And the singers do what exactly what a boxer does. Training, personal sacrifices, excitement, fear, and pain and anguish in order to achieve certain results. The style of acting in opera has changed drastically in the past uh, 30 years. You don't see any more, not even most provincial and remote uh, opera companies, the kind of acting that really destroyed opera at one moment. Now, uh, if you could really design this moment, if you're that, this, but then lose your balance as if you're falling, right, right in the street. Yes, this is going to be nailed. Okay, I got it. Now you lose your balance there. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, yes. Now, straighten up, ladies. That's it. Exactly what you need. The fat sopranos, the big theatrical melodramatic gestures. Can you hold my hand, please, darling? Manuel Dame. Totally unbelievable. Manuel Dame. No, no, wait a minute. Manuel Dame. 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 La prego, Rana. Sometimes scenes that last only a few moments in the opera can take hours to rehearse. I think you could make more of this. Do a little longer steps. So you can cross back. Sometimes I feel that they just enjoy together, really, like little girls. Well, it's easier than a lot of the things they have to sing. And these three kids, for instance, uh, they do something that has never been seen in, uh, in any production of Bohème. It's a fight scene in the fourth act that really, I hope, will bring the house down. But certainly it will be a gold medal for those uh, two guys uh, that really make that scene, that scene new, fresh, and memorable. And very right for the music again, because Puccini has written there a very interesting little piece of uh, dueling. I mean, uh, swashbuckling or whatever it is. Possible things for singers. Really looks very dangerous, very perilous. The first rule for a good rehearsal is to create a positive atmosphere and enjoy it. Not always so easy. And also to make every minute count. And the conductor and director have to agree on where they're going at all times. It's hard to believe that so many details will really get worked out in time. The assistant conductors correct musical errors. 
The stage manager listens to problems that the principals don't always want to tell the director. The coffee breaks are busy times. And he absorbs life and energy from him Absolutely. through the hand. And you show that in the... In Please the save me. Save me. Please love me and save me. And the mute and the it's crying exactly. out for life. And it's parallel with the music all the way. And then you have the death. Death. Yes, it is. And it's this this um this uh, this shadow that hangs over it all the time. And before she reacts, she said, Alto di me non è stata rimarrare. Sono stata vicina. But there is that moment where she contemplates death. sentiment of death, of fate, in this girl's life from the very beginning. Absolutely. And the moment she arrives, and this recurrent sound of death. <laughs> the love of this boy gives her the illusion. Ma quando viene lo gelo, an illusion that she can survive, defeat death. I believe in those dramas. I believe in those characters. I love them. I believe totally, I'm totally taken by this planet of uh, music where people, instead of talking, are singing. And they sing this incredible melodies, beautiful music. In every great creator's life, there is a Roman Juliet, there is a Bohème. There is a magic moment where everything works. All the good, good memories of the happy years of your youth, your creativeness at its best, comes out miraculously. This is the feeling one has through Bohem. There is not a dull moment. Everything works. Everything brings you away from the planet of dullness and uh, uninspired um, everyday life and uh, makes you dream, it makes you feel a better man. <laughs> 